Always take pictures of your rock chips or your damage so they don't stick you with it. Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Today on Rental Reviews, we are going to look at a 2020 GMC Yukon SLE. I'll cover some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, and just some of the practical or impractical features uh, that you might find with a vehicle like this if you decide to purchase or rent one. So let's have a closer look. We do have our remote start, so we can lock it. Hold this button down. Fires right up. Handy feature if you're renting it in the winter and you have outside parking where you have to pick it up, you can let it run for a little while first. We've got our key fob. We can do our double window release. This doesn't open the tailgate, as you can see. Higher trim levels it would. Just close it there with your hand, but we're gonna have to open this manual style. There we go. And in the back here, exactly like our 2016 Escalade. Not surprising, but still kind of surprising when you look at it. The difference is in the higher trim levels and in the Escalade, you would have switches around this area that would allow you to fold down these seats, which we just have to do manually instead. Make sure your headrests are down. There you go, nice fold flat. But if I want to fold those seats, I'll have to uh, open the side door to get them, where in the Escalade you have uh, switches up here that can fold that uh, first row. In the back here though, you have storage for your jack down there, your fuse panel, one of the fuse panels anyway. You got some tie down straps here here, got our 12 volt accessory there, and underneath this lid, you've got your tire iron, you've got a cargo net, and you also may end up having a trim piece that fits in your bumper there, and that's where you would crank down the spare tire. Okay, pretty straightforward in there. Pull strap to close it, there is no automatic button which would normally be located here or here I believe. So we'll close that. In the back seats, fairly roomy. This seat's back a little ways. I'm just a hair over six feet, um, but I do have some leg room, so that's good. But in the back here, we do have our fold down armrest with cup holders, a little bit of storage there. The doors are actually not too bad. Got a lot of storage, got a little cubby there, got a cup holder, a deep cubby there. Got our Bose speakers, pockets in the back of the front seats. To fold this row of seats, you grab this lever right here. And they fold just like that. I believe you pull it up again and it will fold straight up. Pretty easy, maybe hard for kids, but for adults, uh, the strength needed is minimal, but little kids might not be able to do that. Got quite a bit of storage here. In the console, we have our 110 plug for smaller electronics like laptop chargers. Got our fan control temperature, and you can do the climate control with the vents up here as well. And there's a set of vents in the back you can just close or open for the third row passengers. And a nice big cubby right there. On the passenger side, we have all your standard controls, lock, window, leather wrapped armrest, a little bit of cubby storage here, deeper pockets here, our Bose speakers. In the interior, in our glove box, do we have a window sticker on this one? No, we don't, just insurance. Okay, no matter. Got our vents there, our defrost. Got this uh, fake wood trim in this model. We do have large automatic, automatically illuminated large sun visors with vanity mirrors. 
We've got the power adjustable seats with lumbar. But this one does have the cloth interior, not leather. This is more of a, a base model package, which is common in a lot of rentals. We'll just pop the hood and have a closer look, but I'm guessing this is a 5.3 liter V8. <laughs> nice and dirty as I would expect. I'm probably the first one to open it since it's oil change. And there we go. 5.3 liter. Should be adequate, but it's not the 6.2 liter powerhouse, but for a rental, I'm not complaining. Child lock. We have our stop people from rolling down the windows. Locks out all the controls. There's our window controls. We have our adjustable mirrors there. Up here we have our uh, dimmer for when we have the lights on. Turn the gauges up or down. We have all our lighting controls here. We have two high. We have automatic, so it'll automatically recognize when wheels are slipping and engage four wheel drive, or we can keep it in four high all the time. You can switch to this while driving. You don't have to be parked. We'll go back to two high because it's summer conditions. We've got traction control on or off there. We got a parking uh, warning there so you can turn off your sensors. Maybe you're hauling a trailer and backing up and you don't want that beeping to keep going off. Pretty standard gauge cluster. Got our RPMs, our voltage, our temperature, fuel, oil pressure, and our speed. And then now we're all accustomed to being able to go through the menu and uh, change and customize a lot of our settings. Got our cruise control options here. We got our hands free for making phone calls and some voice controls. In our climate controls here, we have the rear controls, so you can stop it from working at all, or you can give control to them um, right here, and they can change the where the air goes, so on the top or at the bottom, fan speed and temperature for the back. So it's convenient, you can synchronize or have separate controls for your passenger. So if you want to unsync it, you just spin the passenger side and they get control of their own. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. On the back of the steering wheel, we have volume up and down buttons. And on the back of the steering wheel on this side, you can change your track or the radio station up and down, which is handy. Have our tilt steering here. We've got our media controls here, but this is a touch screen as well. You might like this if I hit this button right here, you have your secret storage compartment with a USB charging port there, or interface port, you can push that again, I've always like that. You go home here, you have all your standard options, very responsive touch screen, lots of customization available. Anthony's phone was on here next. My name is not Anthony. I'll be setting mine up soon. And you can see that there's a disc slot right here for CDs. In the console, we've got the 12 volt. We've got uh, two USBs right there. A couple cup holders. Very deep storage right here for all your articles. Again, more USB ports and auxiliary plug right there. And another 12 volt. So well equipped for all your charging needs, that's for sure. Anyway, let's get on the road and uh, see how it is to drive.
right, here's our road noise test at 120 kilometers an hour. Pretty decent considering this is a base model trim. And uh, I just finished a Bluetooth phone call and never had any issues, didn't have to crank up the volume. So it definitely gets a pass. Okay, our trip is done. So that's the 2020 GMC Yukon SLE trim package. A few things I liked about it was it was easy on gas. The cylinder deactivation helps. It was very comfortable. Uh, the Bluetooth uh, worked well so I could hear my podcast while driving and killing some of the time. And the phone calls I had to make were clear. I didn't have to crank up the volume. And a lot of that was attributed to the cabin was pretty quiet at uh, highway speed. So all in all, I'd rent it again. There wasn't really much I didn't like about it, except it is the base model, so it didn't have some of the extras that are nice, like leather would have been nice, even though the seats are comfortable in cloth, um, but heated would be good, or even cooled. Um, no heated steering wheel, it was pretty chilly this morning when I picked the vehicle up, um, but really not much to complain about. Uh, solid experience, and like I said, I'd rent it again. So if you liked today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing, and we'll talk to you next time.